If you have your Bibles, turn in quickly to Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. Hallelujah. Say amen when you're there. Standing for the reading of the word, reverence to the word, that's what we do around here. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise or, or manner. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary the thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken of by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Though this story to a lot of people is archaic, maybe some of you have heard it so long, you maybe you're not going to express it with your words, your life, maybe you're a little tired, maybe it doesn't inspire you. But I can tell you something, this, this story is as current as anything today. It's a the Christmas story is the ultimate pro-life story. Mm -hmm. Jesus came as a vulnerable pre-born child. Mary embraced <laughs> the life despite social stigma. Thank God they didn't have Planned Parenthood back then. The big one is Joseph ex accepted the responsibility of fatherhood. And they both fought to protect our Lord from being killed as an infant by King Herod. That's a pretty current event profile. Pretty awesome that it fits in today. Joseph is really easy to overlook in the Christmas story. In fact, he's only mentioned in four chapters in the Bible. If you take license and realize that Joseph probably never witnessed the ministry of the son he was asked to raise. Quite interesting. Born of the tribe of Judah which means that Joseph, by birthright, had legal claim to the throne. When we look at Matthew's gospel for clues as to why God chose Joseph for this sacred assignment, most of us never even looked at it in that term. We're so busy. Man, our Savior is born. Man, we've got to. We look at Mary, we look at, we look at Jesus, and Joseph is kind of like that fifth wheel. But Joseph had to overcome some things. Joseph had to be quite an amazing man. Mm -hmm. There were some serious mental, emotional, and physical obstacles here that he had to overcome. Now, first of all, let's just be honest. I'm pretty sure Joseph, before this whole thing got rolling, had dreams for his life. He probably had some ideas, because unlike today, you just don't run out on a Friday night and get yourself a, a girlfriend. Back then, you, you kind of had to get your act together. You had to be an upstanding citizen. You had to have a trade, a job, and most likely a home before you took a wife. And so here's 
Joseph in a situation that his espoused is pregnant, but not by him. There's, it, there's some more to that. We'll get into that in a little bit. But So instantly, <laughs> his dream becomes a nightmare. A little more difficult than what today is. Oh, they got kids will be kids. Oh, no, it was a little different back then. Culture was different. Laws were different. You know, so in, in this, I'll get into that in a minute, but if you think about it, he's a spouse to this young girl. She's pregnant, not by him. His dreams are in a mess. Finds himself on the way to Bethlehem for the census with a pregnant wife. He finally gets to his destination. There's no room for him. And he finds himself in a barn. <laughs> and then to con really condense it, he finds himself not going back home, but going to Egypt. You talk about broken dreams, folks. You talk about a guy that had to navigate some stuff. Because uh, I know there's some of you in here, if you only knew what I went through. I tell you what, I wonder if Joseph walked in here and started talking, how silent some of us would really get when we wanted to, we want to open up and show everybody our pain pan. Some of you think you got problems? Some of you think you got issues? Let, let, let's, let's look at this tonight because Joseph's obedience to the will of God is astounding. It shows us a thing. You think you got this living for God, obedient, submissive thing down. Let's look at Joseph for a minute. Let's look at the miracle nobody seems to talk about. <laughs> God replaced, took, hijacked, if you'll allow me to use that term, Joseph's dream and gave him an angelic vision. Joseph the neglected and even forgotten role model, the invisible man at Christmas, or was he? One aspect to the answer as to why God chose Joseph is, is listed very clearly in, in Scripture, and it's his pedigree. Both Matthew and Luke trace Joseph's family lineage back to David's royal family tree. And prophecy required that the Son of God be of the lineage of David. But I'm pretty sure at this point Joseph wasn't the only qualified male for that DNA prophecy match. I believe one of the main reasons as I go through this tonight, God chose, jo chose Joseph was because of his convictions convictions. Convictions are your personal integrity of what you do and what you don't. In first century Palestine or Israel, there was no legal difference between being engaged and being married other than consummation. That wasn't allowed. See, because back then you couldn't run down to Walmart, buy some flowers and sign the registry and put a wedding. It took, it took a year to plan for a wedding. Mm -hmm. And so the engagement was set, the marriage contract in place. They both had to live a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, to get unengaged, which is what Joseph faced, it wasn't just as simple as canceling a wedding. It was literally to get a divorce, to shut it down. That's why Joseph, who was his spouse, wanted to do this privately. So easy to say, but very more, so much more complex to understand because Joseph had a way out that was both legal and moral because he could have divorced Mary on the grounds of adultery and move on in his life, but in fact, Matthew 119 says, Joseph being a righteous man, righteous man, 
Joseph was a righteous man. We like to be right, but are we righteous? Because Joseph does something here that should arrest all of us in our character and integrity. He didn't want to throw her under the bus. There's something about our nature when we got the goods on someone, we kind of like to, we want it over our head. We, we like to know, well, I know a little bit about being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her, one translation says, decided to divorce her secretly. Here they were in the throes of marriage planning. Joseph and Mary, I can imagine as Joseph was working and he'd see Mary and it, that look. Come on, y'all know. Y'all have someone in your life, especially if you're married, you got that look. Not, not the look we get now after being married for a few years, but the look you had. <laughs> not the look, oh man, I got to do this when I get home. No, that look of, hey. You know, maybe we need to rediscover that look, I don't know. But can you imagine the shock? How about the horror? How about the gut-wrenching feeling when, when, when Mary said, hey, Joseph, guess what? I'm pregnant. I, w I wonder how many of you guys still be in the middle of a fit right now. 2,000 years later, you're still throwing a fit. You did me wrong. Yeah, I can't. I'm going to let everybody. shocking words from Mary Joseph world his world his dreams literally his plans began to fall apart again and rightly he plans to divorce which seems ugly but when, when you realize he wants to do it privately he's not hurt nobody what a guy what a what a, what a, if you want to hurt someone because you know something. You may be right, but you're not righteous. So when we think about Christmas, we got a lot of troubles at Christmas, but Joseph had him some troubles. You know, hospitals don't empty out at Christmas. Funeral homes don't close down. Marriage problems don't magically go away. Rebellious children don't always come to their senses. People get hurt. Dreams get shattered. And Joseph is a picture of Christmas of the reality is not everything is beautiful at Christmas. Now, considering Joseph's situation, a divorce was allowed both according to the civil law and the scriptures, which is one of the reasons why Joseph was righteous. But before you prematurely jump to judgment, you got to consider his point of view. you got to consider the intricacies of what's going on. His wife is, pre is pregnant and the baby's not his. So he easily could have concluded that, well, you cheated on me. I doubt those were the terms that they used, but you cheated on me and now you got some story about being impregnated by the Holy Ghost. Let me get this straight, honey. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me let me wrap my mind around this one because he had to navigate this long before we're navigating going to a census. Okay, run that by me again. I I, I think that we can see. One of the reasons why God chose this, this man. Because as far-fetched as it was, and as much right as he had, I'm going to keep this under wraps. Because doing the right thing, he knew, I'm saving lives too. Because back then, you go read in Deuteronomy, which they still followed, 
It's a penalty of death. And then Joseph wasn't in the clear either because um, how are you going to prove you didn't? Well, shucks, we're getting kind of sticky here just a little bit. There's a whole lot going on here, folks. We never looked at Joseph. So, you know, we're so, we're bit, we by rights talk about Mary. What an amazing story found with favor and pregnant out of wedlock. And gee, what a wonderful story. But let's stop and not forget that it took a righteous man to bring about a wonderful Christmas like we celebrate. Thank God for righteous men. We got a lot of men who want to put their foot down and think they're right. But oh, thank God for righteous men. I think God looked and chose Joseph because not only would he be right, he would do the right thing. Because if your validation comes from destroying another person, rather than maintaining your own uprightness for your own personal integrity, then there's something not right or something wrong in your heart. I don't need to put you down. My, my own integrity says, you know, I can be silent while you do that. Joseph didn't want to clear the air. Your candle will never shine brighter by blowing someone else's out. Be careful when you counsel and you talk and you get involved in situations that your opinion, though you may think is right, makes you unrighteous. A lot of times what we think is compassion is our version and not God's version. I believe one of the reasons God chose Joseph was because of his compassion. Joseph handled this sensitive situation in a compassionate way. Being prepared to privately end this arrangement with Mary instead of humiliating her publicly. Being righteous means more than just doing the right thing in the right way. It also means protecting. Proverbs 25 and 2 says, It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. God, what do you want me to do here? It's funny, when we're going through something, we seek God, but what if someone's done something wrong? Do you still seek God to find out if you should really Y'all crucify? This is the kind of father. This is the kind of man God wanted to raise his only begotten son. It's also the kind of father man God chose for you to raise yours. Good fathers and husbands don't intimidate and humiliate those God called them to love and lead. And that talks to every one of us men. If you're going to be a father figure with integrity, you can't be the type of man that throws other folks under the bus behind closed doors around the dinner table or even driving home. In all honesty, Joseph knew how to treat people. Frankly, we all should. I mentioned Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 22 and 21 gave Joseph the legal right to have Mary stoned. And though that's rare these days, we don't stone people these days. We, we sue them or bully them on social media, gossip, or assassinate their character. We can tell a lot about you or we can tell a lot about ourselves, how we treat those around us, especially those that can do nothing for us. It's easy to come across a nice person. Well, let, me, let me rephrase that. It's easy to come across as a nice person by your silence. But honestly, it's more courageous to step up and help when you see a need than seek revenge. That's deeper, and there's more to that. Dig that out. I don't think it's an overstatement that it was a huge step of faith for Joseph to believe Mary or an angel of God in the dream that he had. I've had some dreams. 
seemed so real that when I wake up, it took me a while to get over. A little while for me to navigate. That being said, how could Joseph verify <laughs> that this baby was a, role, a result of Mary's yielding God or an indiscretion? Was this God's intervention or was he being fed a line? What's that tell us? Are you close enough with God that he can speak to you? Let me say it this way. Maybe, man, I'm finding I'm sleeping a whole lot more lately because I want God to deal with me easier in my dreams than it is for him to give me vision. <laughs> Another thing, because we, we've talked about a few words here of compassion, of conviction, but another word that Joseph personifies is courage. He displayed great courage. Trusting this young girl, trusting her words, trusting this angel that spoke to him, trusting the will of God instead of his own feelings. Now, Sister Crow mentioned this the other day. I said, when you tell me I feel, I feel, or I feel, to me, that sends emergency lights. And that's one of the reasons why. How many has asked the question, where are the miracles at today? Because you're feeling for blessings. You're wanting blessings. You're in the church, you want to come in, feel the blessings of the Lord, but you're, you're not willing to step further to be miracles for God, which means it stretches who you are. See, see, a lot of times, we have to say, we're in America, we're opulent. Money has corrupted us. We're, we're, you could be poor, but you still got a full refrigerator here. So really, there's not much difference between the poor in America and the rich. Really not. And so we get this false sense of comfort. And so we lose our Christian integrity. We lose our biblical understanding. God can no longer speak to us because to get us out of that, mm -mm. first thing we want to do when something goes wrong, man, it's doing wrong, I can't see God in this. you telling me Joseph could see God in this? Wait a minute now. Hold on, folks. Joseph displayed great courage. He played this entire event close to the vest. Well, let me just, hold on, folks. I, I'm going to go talk to the rabbi. I got to get something straight here. I'm going to go talk to her parent. If he started doing investigating, he'd have started. It would raise suspicion and cause confusion. Can you imagine having such a close walk with God? He didn't even go to elders to ask advice. Not only was he going to do what was right, he was going to be righteous. That was bigger than that statement. Some of us have pride in our rightness. But righteousness is humble. He, he didn't create a commotion because it would trigger more problems. Joseph had a personal integrity of compassion that was courageous. He accepted his leadership role as a husband and the father bravely. We don't hear much of him. He doesn't, there's not anything recorded of him saying anything. He accepted it. He, if our family has problems, perhaps we should pray over them instead of panicking over them. <laughs> Brother Cody hasn't been to my house. Trusting God with imperfect people in our families and ministries takes courageous faith. <laughs> Some fear is healthy and even normal. Fear of death makes us drive slower. Unless you're late, theoretically. 
Fear of punishment prods us to tell the truth to our spouses, friends, church members, CPA, and the IRS. Fear of being stoned for your fiance's indiscretion is a good reason to keep from marrying her. His options weren't obvious. A lot of times being righteous isn't the obvious choice. There was really no easy way out of the situation. Joseph, you're in it. There's nothing worse than being involved in the kingdom of God and someone looking at you who's intricately involved in life and say, leave me out of it. Can you imagine as an angel of the Lord appeared that Joseph, I'm too comfortable with my plans. Leave me out of it. I don't see any. We all have the right to say that, but that's not righteousness. Because like I said earlier, if Joseph couldn't prove that Mary had been unfaithful to him, that divorce idea could backfire on him, and he could be looking at a pile of stones. And a pretty good financial bill, depending on which way it went. The understanding of Deuteronomy, you can go back and read that. We often miss the particulars of an incident because of cultural differences. You just can run out, get a girlfriend, and do what you want physically and get married back then. You'd be stoned. So we're starting to see that Joseph was not just a supportive role in the Christmas story. He wasn't just an insignificant shadow, an insignificant person that was just a victim of circumstance. He was an active participant. He played a key role as a righteous man. And if we ever needed righteous men, righteous men in the church, and righteous men in their actions, their conduct, and their words, righteous, because when you stand before God with your right, you're going to be wrong. Let me give you, this is free, it's not in my notes, but if you run around in your rightness, you're standing on your rightness and not this word, you've condemned yourself, trust me. But if you'll be humble and righteous on this word, you can be saved. But the minute you think you know better, the minute you think you are better, you condemned yourself. The minute you say, well, I know the Bible says that, but you're in danger of hellfire right now. Joseph played a key role. Look what he did, because there was something else that he was, which we don't want to find today in men. Submission. Joseph was able to submit. When Joseph woke up in Matthew chapter 1, 24 and 25, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him, and he married her, but did not have relations with her until she gave birth to a son called his name Jesus. He had the right, but he was righteous. Righteous. Many times we want to stand on, I'm right, but God's looking for the righteous. Godly submission is a result of blending compassion and courage. A lot of men just don't have the courage to be righteous. It's easy to point at compassion it's easy to point at truth. It's easy to point at rights. But to be righteous. Joseph took a pregnant Mary almost 100 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Then from Bethlehem to Egypt, 760 odd miles with a newborn. Eventually he'd backtrack at least 900 miles from Egypt to Nazareth, having taken the long way to avoid trouble. Joseph wasn't chosen because he was a smart man. Joseph wasn't chosen because he was a rich man. Joseph wasn't chosen because he was a famous man. Joseph wasn't chosen because he was a strong man. Joseph was chosen because he was a righteous man. 
He was God's man, and God could trust him that even if he had the goods on someone, he'd be righteous. Even if he had rights, he would be righteous. What an amazing man Joseph is that's overlooked in Scripture. You could see this tonight. I'm a right man. I'm a strong man. I'm a rich man. I'm a blessed man. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 26, 27, brothers and sisters, consider your calling. Don't be distracted. Listen right now. Not many were wise from a human perspective. Not many powerful. Not many of noble birth. Instead, God has chosen what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen what is weak in the world to shame the strong. talk about Mary, we talk about Jesus, but we don't have Christmas without Joseph. We do not have Christian without Joseph. We do not have Christ without a Joseph. Our world needs more men like Joseph. Christmas story of Joseph reminds us that to actually follow Jesus is sometimes quite difficult. It's complicated. <laughs> it's not as cut and dry. There's a great irony in the Christian life. It's displayed in Joseph because Following Jesus propels you into a life that is simultaneously the most joyful and sometimes the most difficult. Jesus promised us life more abundant in John 10 and 10, but he also called us to take up our cross and follow him in Matthew 16 and 24. So despite the struggle between joy and pain, God points us toward a life of preserving hope. What did, what did Joseph do? Can you imagine to become immovable? Uncompassionate in the situation? Grabbing the letter of the law and throwing it in the angel's face and Mary's face? Joseph's part of the story was the hope. <laughs> Good men, righteous men, propel hope to hopeless situations. You danger people. You hurt people. You, you wrong people when you try to negotiate. Give hope. Joseph demonstrates for us That our plans are not always God's plans, no matter how righteous you think they are. And can you be snatched out of the middle of your plans and your determinations by an almighty God and say, I really need a righteous man. I've got a situation that will transcend everything legally and financially, emotionally. I'm merely looking for a righteous man in what looks like an unrighteous situation. My God, what an amazing Christmas story it is when we look at it through the eyes of a man named Joseph plucked out of the lineage that did the amazing things for God. Overlooked. He is a miracle man. Joseph's plans were to anything and everything that any man of that day would want. Being a carpenter. Now, being a carpenter back then wasn't like a carpenter would be today. He, he, he did a lot of work with stone, too. You can't 
You can't be a carpenter back then and not deal with stones at the same time. They just didn't have the lumber we have. You know, there was a lot of other things going on. And God spoke to Joseph, and Joseph listens intently. When God spoke to Joseph, he sent an angel. Joseph listened intently. How many times I was going, this don't make sense to me. Well, you think it made sense to Joseph? God wasn't looking for a man that's always right. He was looking for a man that's always righteous. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife. What did he do? He was humble and submitted. His obedience was immediate. There was no delay, <laughs> no pondering the decision to obey or to not obey, no debating the consequences, simply active obedience. Righteousness was a part of who he was, and that's a rare, courageous trait today. Did Joseph understand everything being asked of him? many of us get excluded from the work of God, the plans of God because we think we have to understand everything or it has to be our plans or it has to be what we think or how we think. How many of us are missing being a part of the miracle because we can't be righteous? There's no way he could understand it but guess what? He didn't have to. Because when God gives us something to do, we do it whether we understand it completely or not. It doesn't always make sense, but it doesn't have to. Joseph was a righteous and just man. He was a man that was full of character, courage, and compassion. He was a man that was obedient to his God. And God honored that man with the privilege of, of raising the Son of God. Wow. What a what a man. What a what a what what a what an amazing display. Remember that he only asked that we would believe him and be obedient to what he asks of us. In accepting believing and being obedient, Joseph's choice to forego that expected and elaborate marriage ceremony to take a pregnant Mary to be his wife. And when the angel gave him the name, and he named went through all that, you have to understand, to formally adopt Jesus as his own, he would be ever, and I need you to hear this, some of you are stuck on who you are instead of who God is. He would be ever known to the townspeople as under question. Some of us will never be able to go to those heights or depths with God because we're so busy trying to keep our name from being under question. There's only one name above every name. There's only one name worth being consecrated to and being righteous to. Oh, hallelujah, humble carpenter. We have, we have none of, jo uh, of Joseph's recorded words. No record of his testimony. His actions of obedience, his mercy and kindness and love speak volumes about the character of this man who God chose to stand. I believe every one of us can learn much from the character of this man, the courage, and the compassion. Joseph truly was a man needed in times of trouble. <laughs> God is 
gracious. God is good. And during this Christmas season, it's awesome to know that God plucked out of a society a couple of nobodies as far as society was concerned and honored them with the privilege of being the mother and the father of the King of Kings and the Prince of Peace. could decide to give a gift to those around us. It's a silent, unseen, unseen, but easily felt gift that's not wrapped in decorative paper. There's no bows or elaborate ribbon. There'll be no fanfare, no announcement, but just a silent gift of compassion, care, and love of a righteous person to those around.